French doors suck, dude. Shut up. All right, welcome to the Practical Pistol Show. My name is Ben Seger. I'm here to answer your shooting questions. Joining me today, producer Candace. Hey. And Mr. Caleb Giddings. Hello, internet trolls. <laughs> you might be wondering, why do you give a shit what Caleb Giddings thinks? He is a five-gun master in IDPA. And what else, Caleb? Help me uh, out here. I'm an A-class shooter in USPSA, which was harder than getting five-gun master in IDPA, by the way. God damn Don't it. tell people that. Don't and, tell people that. Oh. Um, da, 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 da. I write a bit about guns on the Internet, and for some reason people pay me to do that now. So, you know. Right. Uh, so let's go with Five Gun Master and Gun Writer Guy. That's fair. A class will. That's okay. And I will say, uh, Caleb is. After observing Caleb shooting, Caleb is pretty good at a lot of different things. That's fair, right, Caleb? I would agree with that. Yeah. So I'm... you're like pretty good at bullseye. Pretty good at you know uh, NRA action pistol. Pretty good at USPSA. I would say I'm pretty consistently average at a disparate group of sports, and I've never been able to kill my ADD long enough to get really good at one. All right. That sounds fair. All right. That kind of brings us to our first topic. We have to clear the air a little bit. Um, Caleb, you haven't had a chance to hear it yet, so I'll just give you the cliff notes. Um, on a recent episode, Candace shit on you pretty hard uh, about the article you wrote where you said you didn't care enough about winning to put in the work to win at, at shooting sports, I amazingly defended you saying, homeboy doesn't care, he doesn't, he doesn't care. So, like, uh, that's fine. So, uh... So he didn't care enough to write... He didn't care so much that he wrote an article about it. Don't talk, don't talk like he's not in the room. Oh. Uh. <laughs> Man. Well, Candace, defend shitting on Caleb. Defend yourself. Well, you know, the thing was, dude, I mean, you're one of the reasons that I wanted to be a five-gun master, man. Sorry. <laughs> but there it is, you know. It's like giving up on it, that's just like the antithesis of, like, the whole reason I do this at all. You know, it's like, I don't know, man. I just don't, I don't get why you would want to win and not get better. To me, the winning is just part of that. I don't understand. You, you know, I actually, I, I, I understand what you're saying, and I, I do understand where you're coming from. And to, to explain a little bit, to give you a little background, I wrote that post on probably at about 2 a.m. from my hotel in Germany, and I was just kind of thinking and thinking about stuff and thinking about the fact that I've been doing this blogging, so I started. I, did, I shot my first competition match, which is a bullseye match, in 2000, uh, and then I started blogging in 2006. So I've been doing this for a long time, and this last year was hard. I got fucking burned out. I got burned out bad, and I wasn't having fun doing it. And I've always said, and you can search my blog, and this is all over it. I've always said, when it stops being fun, I'm gonna stop doing it because what the hell is the point of investing time and effort into shooting or weightlifting or or any recreational activity if you're not having fun doing it. And you know, the, the truth is I pay my bills these days by selling ads in the firearms industry, not by winning matches or teaching classes. Now, those things are still fun and shooting matches is still an enjoyable activity, but I found that I just wasn't getting the same emotional ROI. So I'm not gonna I don't feel I don't particularly feel the need to burn myself out even further doing something that I don't love as much as I used to. And you know, it's funny after I put that post up, I got a lot of feedback from uh, friends of mine in the industry, uh, people I've known for a while, and the general thought process was that it's been good to take some time off, and that you know, if I take some time off this year and come back and I'm re-energized and want to do it again, that's great. Or maybe I'll go be a race car driver for a while. All right, Candace. Well, I thought the gist of the article was more like you were saying that the practice wasn't it wasn't worth it and you were playing in these hider divisions because you wanted trophies, man. I mean, what's up with that? No wonder you're not having any fun. I mean, there's no juice in it. Well, yeah, and I let my uh, focus get totally whacked for a while, and that's just and that's on me because I like uh, I like winning and I'm kind of lazy. 
So, you know, I wanted to... I, I'm, I'm an honest guy. I like winning. I'm kind of lazy. I wanted to put the, I wanted to get the rewards without necessarily putting the work in. And that was, and kind of that was part and parcel to the whole thought process of, you know, I used to enjoy practice. I used to enjoy going to the range and train. So if I'm not enjoying that anymore, maybe it's time to take some time off. Right. And now you're, are you, are you back doing what you love now, Caleb? Uh, talking about how great, uh, talking about revolvers on the internet. Yeah. I love yeah. Like that. the last seven articles. What are you talking about? Like, here's your sister revolver. Uh, I can barely hear you, by the way. But yeah, mostly lately, I've just been talking about revolvers, and it's it's fun. It's what I love to do. Candace, am I, is my level okay? I can hear you fine, dude. I think it's the iPhone. It's oh, probably it's my iPhone is shit in the bed. Oh my god. Well, that was boring as shit. I mean, I thought that'd be a uh, what? Candace, I thought you put it to Caleb. Well, Caleb, what? I thought you Man, kicked the gun. I can't argue. I can't argue with him. Totally given, you know, just saying that it wasn't working for him. Man, I mean, no wonder though. I mean, I would shoot production because it's like that's where all the juice is. That's where all the heat is. That's where all the improvement is for me locally. So it's just, man. That's I don't know. Awesome. It's just, yeah. I can understand. I had no idea you've been shooting so damn long. Um, yeah, I'm old as I, – I look like I'm, like, you know, 19, maybe 20 on a good day. But I'm actually uh, – I'm, I think I'm older than Ben. I'm 33. I'll be 33 this year. Oh, shut up. Anyway. You're way older than me. <laughs> yeah. Way older. Man. Wow. All right. Well, fireworks didn't happen on that. All right, let's well, – Candice. What? Let's do the discussion topic. Boom, let's move this along. Damn. Yeah. All right. The so, Caleb thing was a flop. What? I thought it was fine. Anyway. I know. You guys kissed and made up or whatever. It's fine. All right. Let's move on. Okay. So there's this uh, article on uh, Trident Concepts by uh, Jeff Gonzalez. All right. Uh, hold on. Just to uh, back this up, this is titled Dry Fire, yep, the Big the Lie. Big Lie. Teed up an internet discussion on this a while back, and it was it was okay. It was a good discussion. So let's uh, let's talk about this article. All right, so anyway, the gist of the article is that uh, he says the bottom line is dry fire simulates several components to shooting, but it's not shooting. The student knows there's no live ammo in the chamber and um, subsequently is a killer commando every time. He com Here comes the hard truth. The big limiter to many students reaching their potential is not lack of shooting, but more often the poor shooting they do already. So he's saying that he goes on to say something like he never misses in dry fire and you're not training your startle response correctly and that you can plan around this whole, like, I know how many dummy rounds are in the magazine and stuff like that. All right, let's get to the bottom of this article because right. there's something I think that's really interesting, like the last line. Yes, dry fire is great and can help create the important neural pathways for movement. It, however, does not address the most common problem with students, and that is the fear that is something that good instruction, high standards, and a healthy dose of awareness can only do. So I'm going to be honest. I hate this article. I think it's stupid because the guy's saying dry fire is great and can help create important neural pathways. I entirely agree. And then he, he talks in the article about all these problems and dangers of doing dry fire shittily. And I agree with all that as well. And I'm somebody who I literally sell dry fire to people. That's one of the things that I do. I think dry fire is great, and I also think there's a lot of problems with it. Okay, so when he's he titles it dry fire, the big lie, that's a lie that I don't know of that anyone's telling. Yeah? Sets up the straw man and knocks it down. I'm never going to get down on a guy for writing a clickbaity headline to get people to read his article. That's what it was, that, wasn't it? Yeah, that's exactly what it was. No, man, you, Caleb would never do that. No, I do that <laughs> shit all the time. I'm going to do that shit tomorrow because I got a fucked up gun. But anyway, I, you know, I think the actual article, to me the thing that resonated the most with it is when he talks about how it's easy to deceive yourself in dry fire. And I would... Uh, I would say that the majority of people who dry fire do not do so from a position of intellectual honesty with themselves. I would, and then I would flip that around and say that the majority of serious USPSA shooters who use dry fire as a training tool are honest with their own dry fire. But that's maybe you know 
uh, what, there's 20,000 USPSA members. That's maybe 1,000, 2,000 people in the whole country tops that are serious dry fire trainers and seriously honest with themselves about their dry fire because it's, you know, it's difficult to pull your gun out of the holster on the time. Who is selling the dry fire lie? Say what? Who is selling the dry fire lie, Caleb? I don't think anybody's selling a dry fire lie. I think What the fuck's you talking about? I think it's a clickbaity headline to get people to read an article that actually makes some pretty valid points about honest mindset. Oh my dry god, fire. we fell for it. God damn you, clickbait. <laughs> god damn it. Yeah, but this guy's talking about shooting people in the face. Don't forget. I mean, we're He's just a bunch of gamer it. fags and we're going to die in the street tomorrow. So I was killed by ninjas three times today. Damn. Uh, the uh, now to talk about Jeff Gonzalez for a little bit, Jeff Gonzalez is actually a pretty legit motherfucker. So it's not like he's coming at this from a point of no knowledge on the face shooting topic. And so there's also this kind of... I would actually agree that if your goal as a shooter is to get better at shooting motherfuckers in the face, then dry fire probably isn't as good as it is uh, if your goal as a shooter is to get better at shooting. You know, suppose... Interesting. Explain your reasoning. Go. All right, so if I want to get better at Bianchi Cup, I need to dry fire, and I need to actually shoot Bianchi Cup a lot. I need to work on trigger control, side alignment, all of these things. I don't need to worry about what's going to happen to my startle response when a guy pulls a knife out, of, out in front of me uh, you know, from 21 feet away. It's a completely different training environment. While competition shooting does get you better at gun handling and all of that really, really important stuff, it doesn't get you better at things like managing unknown contacts, dealing with strangers on the street, recognizing a threat before it becomes a dangerous threat. And I think that there Caleb, has... Yeah. Caleb, what the fuck are you talking about? I don't know what he's talking about, man. Oh, you, uh, goddamn gamers. Look at me, calling people gamers. It's terrible. What have you brought me to? All right, so dry <laughs> Wait, firing... Wait, so dry fire is work. you work on the mechanics of you know, drawing the gun, holding the right. gun, pulling the trigger, right? That's not important for shooting people in the face. Startle oh. response. You know what? It's oh, really enough. it. You know what? It, really? There are certain aspects of it that are. So, what we what I think Jeff is is getting at here is the uh, the gun handling mechanics that dry fire improves are good things. So long as you're honest with yourself about, and I don't want to put words in Jeff ma Jeff's mouth because he could kill me in his sleep and you know not even notice. But yeah, he wouldn't do that. But uh, I don't want to. But the dry firing improves your gun handling. We can all agree that being better at gun handling is a better thing regardless if you want to be a better competition shooter or a better soldier or self-defense shooter, etc. But there are things that you do as a cop or a soldier or someone who's purely interested in self-defense that have nothing to do with competition right. that you wouldn't Caleb, do in competition. Caleb, that all sounds sensible. Now, I'm not a face shooter myself, but right. everything you just said sounds sensible to me. And... What I'm wondering, because you're, you're kind of making, okay, so you're making a, a valid point is that doing dry fire does not make you better at... At killing people. Well, that's not really what you said. You said it doesn't make you Fair. better at doing all of these other things that are related to shooting people in the face, right? Right. But, okay, who is saying, you know, who is saying that dry fire makes you better at managing unknown contacts? I have or, no fucking idea. Right, so it is. It is. It's a, it's a straw man. All, all we're doing is knocking down a straw man. Yes, absolutely. He's he wrote a clickbaity headline and wrote a clickbaity article to and what you see and this is now me talking as a blogger. You see guys write uh, clickbait and they'll use that clickbait and kind of the hyperbole and the blowhard points to get people to read the article in the hopes that the core message will actually get picked up, and that may or may not always work. And usually it backfires, and people just read the clickbait and get butthurt. All right, just as an aside, Caleb, do you have a cat? I do, but that's not coming from my cat. My God damn it, Candace! All right, she's muted herself. She's going to sort out the cat. Throw it out the window. Cats are the devil. <laughs> <laughs> I also have a dog. I'm going to go get my dog because he's awesome. Oh, are you? Yeah, my dog's fucking cool. All right, let's see the dog, and then we can... Uh... All right, the cat has been... Uh... Caleb's showing us his dog. Hey, Wallace buddy. <gasps> Who's a good boy? Hey, Ruger, say hello to the internet, you lazy asshole. Oh, fuck. You named your dog Ruger. Yeah, I did. Cause, um, you know what? Like, we named... That's coincidence because I was shooting at those little... 
targets that are like cut out all the stuff except for like on IDPA, the little zone or whatever, and we called it Ruger for some reason. You called the targets Ruger? Yeah, because they were dogs, man. Oh, uh, man. I thought that was a great name for dog targets. If I That's had a great. dog, I would name it Keltex. <laughs> You know, there's some joke in here about your dog being sickly and retarded with that name, so... No, it would be. Oh, my God. The Keltec booth at SHOT Show. Oh, Lord. What what a collection of fucking idiots were hanging out over there. What? Say it ain't so. Fucking idiots hanging out at the Keltec booth. Yeah, well, you know, it's Keltec. They're going to have a new sub-2000, which will probably only break, you know, a third of the time as opposed to half the time. Hey, that's improvement. All right, Candace, All right. shooting question. So the Let's shooting question this along. week. Yes, shooting question this week is, Ben, I was recommended to count steps while planning a stage strategy. That will avoid me looking down to the floor looking for specific spots. What's your recommendation? Uh, number one, the person who recommended you count steps while planning a stage strategy to avoid looking at the floor, you need to not listen to anything that person tells you again. <laughs> That's number one. Damn. Number two... Uh, don't do that. So we don't need to look down at the at the ground to. Uh, you don't always have to look at the ground to find a spot. So what you want to be doing, if you want to avoid looking at the ground, look for markers that you can find with your head still up. So something at. Uh, Jesus Christ, Candace, your cat is cr out of control. <laughs> Mute yourself, woman. Mute yourself. I'll have. I'll talk with Caleb. What a shit show. Jesus, I thought the show was getting better, but... No, no, absolutely not. But people will love this episode because they love shitty episodes. Well, we, we got them covered there. Okay, so... What the fuck was I talking about? All right, anyway, so... Counting it, steps is dumb. Counting steps is... It's a bad idea. And for that... If you're going to do it for that reason, it's a bad idea. But you want to find markers that you can you can uh, locate at eye level. So we're talking... If, if you... See on a stage, hey, I want to be standing over there now, or when I, I want to be standing specifically in this spot, find a way to locate that spot uh, using a marker at eye level. So, like, you want to stand right at the edge of a barrel or, or at the edge of a wall section or, or something like that. Oftentimes, you're going to see ways that you can, you know, sort of find something where you don't have to look at the ground and save yourself doing that. Caleb, jump in on that. I absolutely agree. Counting steps is fucking dumb. Uh, as a great example of that, Whoa. Ben, you shot Area 3 uh, last year, right? Sure as hell did. And you remember that 32-round memory stage with the one shot on all the turtle targets? Oh, it's depressing, yes. So on that stage, I thought it would be a really good idea for my stage plan to set myself up to count steps, which was not a good idea, and I finished the stage... Uh, with one round in my eight-shot moon clip, meaning I had only fired 31 shots, so I fucked up bad. Uh, uh, wait, hold on. Just as a side question, what is a moon clip? It's a thing that you use to hold rounds when you put them in obsolete technology so oh, you can okay. eject them and reload them quicker. Yeah, that sounds uh, fair. Not yeah. interested. No, it's, it's terrible, and only hiders and posers shoot revolver, except for Jerry, because Jerry's a beast. Uh, but, yeah, no, I tried counting steps because I had this idea that I was going to be like, all right, it's five steps to this next position, and I'll shoot these next tar targets from here, and then it's ten steps to this next position, and I'll shoot these three targets from here, and that was too many numbers. I'm stupid, and I fucked that stage up pretty bad, and every time I've tried to do a plan like that, it's never worked well, and it's much better, actually, like what you said, to look for landmarks, essentially navigate off that and know what you need to shoot from there, although I maintain that that stage was awful anyways. So you uh, you did what we call uh, learning the hard way. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, fair enough. Uh, Candace, hey. are you back with us? Yes, I've been told to count steps, and every single time I think it's bullshit. Yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, fair enough. All right, Caleb, time for the speed round. Questions for you. Yeehaw. Uh, put out a, a little blast on Facebook. I saw that. Caleb would be here. Yeah, you did see that, and you didn't really get uh, you didn't get tore up as hard as I was thinking you maybe would. I think maybe people are just on oh, board of hating on you or something. You know, it's been going on since that fucking TV show, so I think maybe people are finally what starting TV to run out of What TV show was that? Because I, I don't think I watched it ever. I, I hope you didn't because it was terrible and it was one of the worst things to happen to the shooting sports ever. 
Okay. Uh, so, some people wanted to make fun of you because you're short. I am short. I'm five foot six, and even worse than that, all of my brothers. I have three of them. Two of them are younger than me. They're over six feet tall. I've already heard every short joke ever. All right. What's this year's Red Hot Hydro Division? Uh, <laughs> probably IDPA's new concealed carry pistol division, because the rules allow you to shoot a Glock 19 as kind of the top end gun in there. So if you don't want to go get your, you know, your mouth fucked by Bob Vogel in SSP, go shoot the new Hydro Division with a Glock 19. Man, if they have a new six gun master, are you going to do that? <sighs> Probably, yeah, because I'm lame like that. I've got the five. I might as well get the six. Oh, shit. I'll race you to it. Woo. Well, I'm going to be kind of busy this year, so oh, I'm actually... Oh, man. Okay. it. Yeah, I'm actually <sighs> taking, like, five months off from the shooting sports because I have to go down to uh, Lackland Air Force Base for five months to do Air Force training, so... Ooh. <laughs> wow. Yeah, All good right. times. All right. Uh, are you going to travel to hold training classes? Uh, probably not this year, no. Maybe 2016. Uh, will production optics be a thing? God, I hope not. Production optics is the stupidest fucking idea since L10. All right, if production optics was a thing, what would you shoot in it? Uh, probably a... Well, depending on the rules, uh, if you could cut your own slide up, I would probably shoot an FNS modified for the... Or for the Fucking thing or a two twenty six. Actually, you know what? I'd shoot uh, anything that anything with a metal frame. There we go. That's what I'd shoot. Something with a metal frame. Although, if they kept the standard production rules, I could just put a delta point on top of my nine twenty nine, and that'd be good to go. There we go. I'd shoot an eight shot revolver with a Leopold delta point on it. Caleb, you put entirely too much thought into what you would shoot in production optics. I, I did. I did. All I can say is if, I, if they made me shoot production optics, I'd probably shoot myself. It's the dumbest. I, can, can I rant about this for a minute? Production optics yeah, please. is fucking oh, stupid. Oh, yeah. Come on. All right, so production optics is fucking stupid, and it's fucking stupid because it would inherit all the stupid rules from production division about how you can't stipple your gun in certain places and these forward cocking serrations and whatever are illegal. And the guys who go and spend hundreds of dollars to get their slides cut, to put an RMR on them, want to also have their gun, you know, have fish scales on the top so they can dynamically rack it on their pants if their arm's ever wounded in a gunfight. They don't just want to put an RMR on it. They want to do all this other shit to it, which isn't legal for production division. So you'd end up with a gay-ass neutered division where you can modify your trigger and put an optic on it, and it'd just be dumb. It'd be dumb. Bring back modified. Don't give me production optics. Bring back a division that actually brought about innovation and people trying to think creatively to fit a gun into this box. Production uh, optics is idiotic. Oh, here's a problem. Here's a problem, though, Caleb. Wouldn't that be a great hider division, though? Nobody shot modified. <laughs> right, nobody shot oh. modified, but at least modified was interesting. So I, I'm a tech geek when it comes to guns. I like interesting designs and cool things. Yeah, but you don't needed... shoot matches. No, I, I don't give a shit. But right. I think Modified was cool. So as someone who enjoys the technological side of the firearms industry, I thought Modified was cool because it showed what people could do when they were given a white piece, a white piece of paper to work on and said, anything you can fit on this paper is legal, go. That was cool. I thought that was and interesting that and innovative. And that one gun that fit right in the box was just so fucking awesome. It I was. Swear. It really was. Shit like that is cool to me. I'm a, I'm a gun nerd, and I love stuff like that. And I think production optics is just a lazy cop-out for people who don't necessarily want to you know, uh, get good at production or spend $3,000 on a competitive open gun. All right. So two more questions. Uh, did you meet Instructor Zero? I did not meet him. I saw him uh, at media day on the range, and I had this incredible urge to run up behind him, throw a plastic bag over his head, and you'll operate now, motherfucker! But I didn't because they would have kicked me out, and that would have been bad for my career. What was the most interesting thing you saw at shot? No one that watches this podcast is going to care about this, but the most interesting thing I saw at shot was the new Benelli 828. It's oh, an over on. Don't yeah, care. see? It's an over under <laughs> shotgun. It's uh, got a really neat uh, inertia recoil mechanism, and so basically what that ends up with is a very lightweight shot, 12-gauge shotgun that uh, weighs six and a half pounds, but it recoils mute? like a 20-gauge. Oh, my God. <laughs> Whoa. He's <Mute> killing it. <laughs> <laughs> He's killing me. Oh, my God. All right, unmute. <laughs> 
Wait, he says he's muted still. Wait, he's how still you, muted. How do you unmute? I don't know how to unmute. Shit. Click on it again. Uh, Fuck. That's you good thing that we're, There it is. <laughs> All right, oh, now we're on. muted. What? Oh, I muted myself. Never mind. I'm sorry, Caleb. Thank you for joining us, uh, Caleb. You can, uh, yep, get the fuck out of here. Uh, eject. Bye. All right, that's going to do it for us today. Uh, if you have any shooting questions you'd like the answer to, head over to bensteger.com. Send me your question. I'd love to answer it for you. If you have any comments for Candace, head over to the YouTube channel. She loves comments. Right, Candace? Oh, man, they make my day. <laughs> All right, well, that's it for us.